Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about hand-painted textures in Photoshop, specifically. A bit of a different pace of tutorial. Uh, this is going to... First of all, um, I just want to clarify ahead of time, I'm not a painter. Um, I am someone who played World of Warcraft at one point, fell in love with the art style, and has tried and failed to get into painting ever since. And that has been years, because I think I started playing WoW sort of mid... mid to early, um, Wrath of the Lich King. And then, uh, what I ended up... Basically, uh, when I got into... You know, I've been trying to get into hand-painted texturing because of that, and because I've just loved the style, but one of the problems that I had was that traditional painting techniques kind of require a lot of know-how to get good results, and they're a little bit nerve-wracking when you start off, because slight mistakes, you know, it's like, it requires a lot of hand control, which I don't really have, partially because I can't really draw a straight line. I'm not that good at, uh, not necessarily straight line, but I'm not, I don't have much uh, hand control in the first place. I have very jittery fingers, and uh, also, I use a Wacom tablet, um, not a Cintiq, which causes hand-eye coordination issues as well. So anyway, what ends up happening, in the lack of Photoshop Lazy Mouse or anything of that regard, is that um, I end up being pretty terrible at hand-painting textures. Specifically the kind in this very precise, angular style, which... Again, there's a lot of knowledge going into making these kinds of textures, and a lot of the tutorials out there kind of assume that you know about the fundamentals of painting. And uh, the problem is, I don't. And getting into it was very, very difficult for me. So uh, then I ran across a technique a little while back that actually helped me a ton. And to my knowledge, I haven't really seen anyone else using the technique, so I'd kind of like to share it. Um, again, with the clarification that I am not a painter, um, now what the technique is, is it's kind of stolen from sculpting, because what it's actually based on is a low to high resolution painting style. So traditionally painters will like block out paintings first, and then, you know, paint over it. The problem is that kind of assumes you have enough control to like paint along the edge, and I'm personally a fan of where no mistakes, it's really impossible to fuck up, um, because I'm... I'm a horrible, anxiety-filled bundle when I'm dealing with artwork that has an, a margin for error, because if there's a margin for error, I will hit it, um, and I will hit it like a sack of bricks. So anyway, I just kind of want to dive in and show what I mean. So let's create a new image, and I'm going to create it at a really low resolution, like 32 pixels by 32 pixels. We're going to start off at basically pixel art level, and uh, I'm just going to fill it up with gray. I personally like painting in grayscale and then using something like a gradient map, which you can find under here, to actually um, kind of give all the color and toning, uh, just because it lets you have a certain amount of control and adjustability. Um, for example, being able to swap through all this kind of stuff and uh, actually play around with different material types and just kind of get a variety of different tones, and especially as an indie dev myself, saving time like that is rather useful and valuable to me. So anyway, let's dive over to our image, and let's actually just start painting. Now, there are a couple different ways you can approach it. You can try to paint a tileable texture. Works good for organics. I highly recommend. Do not do it on uh, architecture. The reason why I say don't do it on architecture is because it encourages you to model a repetitive surface, like repeat a texture over a surface and create large kind of boring surfaces. I like things that have a large gradient, like if I look at this wall for example, um, this isn't tileable. This has like unique bricks on the left and right side, it doesn't repeat over, it has a firm gradient towards the center, like it's just got all this, uh, what is referred to as energy in environment design. I'm an environment artist, so... Um, but it's got what is referred to as energy, which is basically like where all the focal point is in an environment, um, going firmly towards the center of this image, which is, makes it kind of neutral, 
but it allows these kind of pinpoints, these alcoves. It makes it feel like it's this recess. And you could literally strap this on a plane and it would look like it was a recess just because people's eyes will tell them that because the, all the little uh, energy lines are going to the center. So again, there's stuff like that which I know, and it's fun to kind of lean back on that. You don't necessarily need to know it, but again, I like how non-tileable textures end up playing out, so I don't always like to limit myself to it. For now, we're going to do a non-tiling texture. Uh, I recorded beforehand, did this, ended up going silent for a while. Um, so again, hopefully I won't go silent this time, but I'm just going to sort of block out. I kind of feel like doing a swirly texture, something Zelda-ish. Uh, no promises there, I'm not a skilled enough painter, but notice we're working at a pixel art resolution, essentially. Uh, the advantage of this, the advantage of working at such a low resolution is that when you are working at this kind of a low resolution, you really, your mistakes don't matter. Like, you know, I'm not having to be overly precise here because there literally isn't enough resolution for it to matter. So, in this case, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to sort of start painting in all of my details and my shading. Just very rough. I'm taking a very soft brush and just running over the surface. And uh, yeah, I'm just kind of playing around with the forms. I'm not really caring. I don't I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just actually like, and when I say I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm literally waving my mouse aimlessly over the surface right now. <laughs> I'm just sort of, God, that's a, I didn't even know that came off. <laughs> So, anyway, but yeah, I'm just sort of playing around with the shapes and the forms and all that, so. I'll add a little bit of ambient occlusion to the edge, because I assume this will be framed with something, like uh, wood planking or whatever. I have no idea what I'll model it in, but uh, if I will, I probably won't end up carrying this much further. But, uh, yeah, again, you can just sort of play around with the shape. Then I'm going to drop the, once you've got your kind of shape down and your having fun. Start going in for, and just detailing it as much as you feel comfortable at this resolution. So, in this case, I'm just going to kind of go in and do some detail work, paint in some fine details, and, uh, yeah. Boom. So. I'm just going to kind of keep adding some detail here and there. And if you ever get something that's too noisy for you and you want to deal with it again, the smudge tool is great, which is next to blur and sharpen, which you can do by clicking and holding on stuff. That took me a while to figure out. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can just sort of, you can just sort of start painting. It, it's not super error prone. Like I'm just kind of, yeah, I can just like, okay, whatever. I'm literally just kind of waving my mouse right now. But uh, again, you can always kind of recover from it and just paint over. I'm like, okay, I'm going to draw like a highlight here and a shadow here. And I'm literally just highlighting from the top left. And even then, I'm kind of going for more gradiented pillow shading. But it works because we're going from high to low and that just kind of compensates for a lot. So anyway, here, this looks decent. This looks like some weird brick, weird warped brick wall. Um, so let's up res it. So I'm just going to go to image size. And I'm going to go increase the resolution. And you can see it's now blended. I'm going to temporarily flatten the image. That's another thing. It's out of this transparent border. It does that to layers with transparency. Let me just temporarily flatten the image. I Flattening the image will make that a background layer. Makes the upresing a little bit easier. I don't entirely understand why Photoshop does that. But they do. So eh, we deal. They do, and we deal with it. But one of the cool parts is, like, even if I just... Yeah, I had no idea if I was selecting the white or black brush there, but I can just... I can do this, and it's like, oh, hey, I'm just going to highlight that, shadow it a little bit, and boom. that's There's a change. But again, I'm just going to sort of... In that case, I meant to paint a highlight, but I ended up adding, like, a little crevice thing. Okay, cool. It's now two pieces. Neat. I can just follow it. Like, there's literally virtually no error margin in here. So, it's just such a nice, safe area to work. And, uh, like, no matter what you do, your kind of imagination will just fill in the gap. That will, you know, it's sort of, your imagination can be brought back out as something like more detail in the surface. So, 
Again, I'm just going to sort of, I'm just going to up res real quick and add some shadows around the edges. And then I'm going to bring it down and uh, again with using the dark brush to try to add a highlight, which can actually yield some pretty cool results, as you can see. But again, I'm just sort of playing around. I'm just letting the I'm just letting the image kind of form. I'm not controlling a huge amount. This kind of thing you can just listen to music, listen to a podcast, watch it. You know, if you have another monitor, you barely even need to look at it. Because again, you can just sort of vaguely out of the corner of your eye just watch the painting unfurl, which is kind of awesome. And uh, yeah, I just, I love painting in this style because it's just, first of all, gives me paintings. That's really all I want. It's like, I just want the textures and because this is fun to make. And this actually makes like hand painted textures really fun, which again, like I understand that painting is fun, but it was one of those things where the barrier to entry of me not really understanding the principles of painting and, you know, people will say, oh, well, just do this. It's like, yeah, that's easier for you, but I don't know if it's easy for me. And again, this technique may not be easy for everybody. This is totally not going to be a universal technique that everyone's just going to dive in and like, oh my god, this is the easy technique that suddenly works. And I'm not necessarily saying this is the best technique that every pro should be using because I am not in a, I'm not qualified to talk about that. I'm an environment artist who primarily works in 3d and is like kind of a material junkie that's about it like, that's really about it and i'm just a material junkie really um it's like okay i can tell you that ambient occlusion is a thing and i could tell you how it works and i can tell you how all this other bullshit works but i'm not really a painter um and i've only recently gotten into sculpting and stuff you know it's like over the last year or so have i gotten like seriously into sculpting and i've just fall in love with that and gotten into the more traditional art versus craft kind of stuff. You know, I kind of consider normal 3D modeling to be a lot more craft than art because it's a lot less freeform. It's obviously still art because it's 3D art and it's, you know, something for appreciation's sake, but when it comes down to it, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's a lot more crafty because it's like, okay, well, I have this design and now I know how to craft it. And there's sort of there's that uh, iteration and creative element to it, and it's very creative, but it's it fits a lot more in with like being a um, a smith or something. You know, you're forging something. Whereas with being like an artist in the very painterly sense, a lot of it ends up being interpretation of what you see rather than like raw, like here's my design, better create it kind of thing. So anyway. This is kind of an interesting juxtaposition that I've noticed since kind of getting into it. But again, I'm just sort of following the shapes that I see and drawing and just kind of dicking around. But yeah. And I'm just sort of, this is something that yields some cool patterns where I kind of draw around the edge of a brick with light and dark. And it just sort of breaks up that smooth gradient for like some little details that pass for they kind of pass for uh layers or details or crevices or outcroppings or whatever i don't know kind of create some interesting looks to things and uh yeah so yeah i mean you could just you can keep detailing it as much as you want on a given layer it's like just a thing but once you're happy with a given layer um in this case i might go a little bit further on this layer or i might have normally but uh, i'm gonna try to speed this up so that you guys aren't completely bored for the entire duration and honestly if you're still watching i i appreciate you <laughs> you are have far more dedication or just far more interest in this subject than uh, i imagine most people would but uh yeah that's actually Again, with the trying to do a dark highlight thing, it's like that's a common mistake that I make where I have the wrong color selected because I don't look at it. Because um, I'm just kind of hitting the X button to switch colors. But uh, yeah, you need to see. And one of my favorite parts is just how error resilient this is. It's like it's just so error resilient. Like okay, okay, uh, switch to dark and just 
draw. Okay, cool. It's like I could run with that. It's like, okay, you know, I just, whatever, I'm going to lean over here. Drink some soda, and then I come back, and it's like, oh shit, I drew a line. And I don't know how to control Z yet, because I'm a noob. But, uh, yeah, let's do this. I do actually know how to control Z, by the way. <laughs> it's like, though, I found myself using it less with this style, because it's kind of funner to run with the mistakes than it is. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to control Z this detail. And this wasn't deliberate. Like, I literally wasn't looking at the screen when I made this. I literally went over and grabbed some drink, in case you have noticed the slurping noise. Or in case you didn't notice the slurping noise, rather. English, it's a thing. Funny, English is my first language. I'm still terrible at it. I think that is one of the reasons I haven't learned other languages. It's just I don't want to subject them to my awful, awful use of their language. Because I'm awful enough at my own language. I know people who literally use English none at all natively and just use it online. And they have better English than me. And that's... That's a sad state of affairs, but then again, I also am American, which also makes it just kind of expected and part of the course. <laughs> so anyway, again, and just playing with your, um, playing with your theme and just sort of playing around with what your intent is for it can be so fun and just enjoyable to play with. So anyway, once you've got something that you like, uh, just keep up -resing. you know, keep increasing the resolution. Let's go to 128. Shit's getting real. And again, I'm just sort of vaguely... I'm not even aiming, by the way. I'm just like... Because we're working it... Uh, again, like my detail here, the detail pass that I'm doing, it's like, doesn't matter. I can do whatever. It's going to look fine. And again, I'm not necessarily sure this is a technique that's going to work for everybody, but I hope it does. You know, I hope that it works for everybody, but uh, it may not. Again, I'm a super nub when it comes to painting. This is just something that's helped me a ton. Like, I found more progress in my painting over the last couple months. Or, like, I think month or so. No, for like, a couple weeks that I've had this technique. Than I have in the last, like, years of trying and failing to get into it. But mostly because I would just, I'd get demoralized and give up. Um... It's like, I don't know, I kind of, I have to be having fun with something in order to continue it. Like, when I was in 3D and stuff, I would always try to figure out cool stuff and, you know, cool materials. I love playing with node editors because node editors are a complete safe zone because you, it's completely non-destructive. You don't have to worry about it. There's no thing, there's no point where you can't control Z past. It's like, it's just, it's, you've got your entire node chain and you're just working it. You know, you're just working the node chain. That's why I love things like Substance Designer, is they're just, they're these lovely safe zones where you can just play around and you never have to worry about you're ever going to damage anything or, you know, at one point lose your work or find something cool that you're going to lose. It's like, if you ever find something cool, you can just save it out as an image and be done. You build up your library. And again, you can just, you can just play with this style. I don't, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but, uh. Yeah, let's just draw that in, draw that in. And again, you just keep doing this. And eventually, you'll get something detailed enough where you like it. And again, um, a large portion of this is just not caring. Like, literally just taking a step back and saying, I don't care if this looks, um, you know, like I expect it to or something like that. You just kind of have to take a step back and say, hey, I don't care. I'm taking a step back. This will turn out how it turns out. It may turn out well, it may turn out badly, I don't care. And most of the time it will turn out well. And, uh, yeah. So. As you can see, I'm just, I'm, when I say I'm waving my mouse around randomly, I'm kind of going to be looking at other things. I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of waving my mouse in the vague shape of what I'm looking at. And, okay, you know, sort of highlighting and just drawing and doing things he it doesn't yeah and like when the moment you zoom back it just looks fine you know it's like maybe if you take the smudge tool and spin spin to win there smudge tool
but again, you'll just sort of, um, <laughs> you can hear me getting quieter. Uh, it's just because I'm having less to say. Like, it's just, painting is one of those things that's just so relaxing and chill. It's just like, I'm going to go listen to a thing and just follow my shapes. And, uh, yeah. So, once you've got it detailed enough, and again, you it'll get slower and slower with each resolution. You know, it'll get slower and slower. You'll you have to speak, uh, spend a bit more time. But, uh, again, you'll also remember, you can go quickly. You don't have to detail everything by hand to the max. You can just wave your... You know, you just kind of do a vague thing. Like, uh, in this case... Uh, in this case, just taking a... Wow, that was weird. My, my jaw just cramped horribly. <laughs> like, just snapped shut. Um, that was scary. I need to... I need to get more sleep. I have not had enough sleep this weekend. But, uh, yeah. So, God, what the hell was I saying? I had a thing. Anyway, you can take a dark brush and sort of wave it over the surface to create some crevices, and then you can just accent them with highlights. So you can see here, I'm just kind of creating a lot of detail. One of the other things you can do with this, and uh, I've been kind of experimenting with it, and I have no idea how well it will work. Um, I kind of consider this technique training wheels, but basically one of the things that I started doing for material studies, because uh, I'm trying to get into actual, now that I'm comfortable with this technique, I actually want to start doing some material studies on it, and uh, again, I'm just, I'm just hand-waving, and it looks... I'm just looking at this and it's like, oh my god, that actually looked like I planned it. It's like, no, I'm just waving my hands and things happen. It's amazing. I love this so much. It's like, it's like magic. I love it. You're a painter, Harry. That's, that's my bullshit Harry Potter reference. Harry Potter nerds for the win. Tulu as well. It's like, I may need to do some weird Cthulian rituals. Of darkness. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. It's like, I just... It's so very, very nice. But one of my favorite parts about these kind of textures is just how much it doesn't look... You know, it's like, it's such a nice break from the constant, you know, the constant competition of, like... I don't know, just modern graphics and everything. It's like... Everything's just kind, kind of competition. Oh, and before I get too wandered off subject, my material study thing, before I get distracted by something, I don't remember, um, was that I take, uh, I've been taking an image, dropping it down to low resolution, and then painting it over it. Uh, so adding like a normal photorealistic wood texture, dropping it down to low resolution, and then painting over it. Um, and actually like going in and painting over it and stuff, and like going resolution by resolution. So drop it down to like pixel art levels, and then paint over it and like accent the shapes you see and stuff. And it's like by the end of it, uh, my theory is that it will start looking like a, um, you know, painting, because you, of course, painted the majority of it, but you've also got a color palette and a uh, proportions of a real thing. Which, I don't know, I think would be cool. Kind of an interesting style to test out. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's my next thing. I'm just, I'm having a lot of fun experimenting with it. So anyway, once you've got it detailed enough that you're happy with it, um, once you've got it detailed enough that you're happy with it and you're, you know, just generally like you want to, uh, you know, you're ready to continue and ready to dive in, um, what you can actually do is you can go in here to your filters and add a gradient map. I love gradient maps. You can just add a color in the middle. It gives you this little gradient that you get to uh, play with. But what you can do is you can set a color in the middle, and this is like your main color for the surface. So you can say like red or uh, something of that nature. So you could say like, you know, kind of a brownish color. This kind of gives you that uh, Order 1886 vibe, but in painter form. That'd be amazing. <laughs> it's just, just a really pixel art Order 1886. Just pixel or steampunk would be awesome. But, uh, yeah, stuff like this. 
you want to go a little bit fancier because we're not doing a tileable texture uh, what we can actually do to actually increase this is actually add a gradient like a literal gradient over the surface I'm gonna make it go from uh, eh, let's make it go from like let's go for a really obvious warm cold contrast thing so we'll go for like warm to like a cool cyan and then we'll go to color and look at that look at that gorgeousness right there like now that's cool like you said color filter mode so it uses just the hue and saturation it's like that's pretty as balls look at that yeah so pretty okay we can also increase the scale decrease the scale do whatever we can make it like a really harsh contrast just double click it one hundred percent if I can figure out where my keys are And uh, yeah, or you can do, let's play around with some of the different styles like radial. Radial is cool looking. I like that. Kind of this warm thing. Reverse. You can just have this like gradient out to the edges. But again, you can just play with these layer effects and get so many pretty textures. It's like, and again, one of the cool parts about this that I really like and painting grayscale specifically is like once you've got colors like this, you just get to go in and like paint over them. It's like, yep, I'm just gonna go in, paint some extra details in here. Don't mind me. You can also go to image auto contrast, which will automatically bring all your whites. Uh, it'll basically take your highest white value and make that like literally pure white, and it'll take your darkest dark value and make that like pure black. It basically automatically uses the entire color range, which can be good. It can also be bad if you're trying to darken the darks. Basically, uh, will cap out your colors to a certain degree. It's good for a final image. But again, you can just play around with what you like. And uh, yeah, when you're ready, just keep up resing. And my keys are not in the right space, which actually means that I'm not in the right space because my chair is slid back. But anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, you just keep going in for details. And, uh, yeah. Let's play around some of the other effects, like uh, Blur, Smart Blur. Which is essentially watercolor. <laughs> Look at that. That's a neat style. That'd be kind of a neat style to do. Like, uh, kind of a weird, layered, um... Just kind of a strange layered style like this. It's like, this is all your textures. And just finding all the weirdness involved in that. So let's go to filter. What other kind of bullshit do we have in here? Um, lens blur. The fuck does that do? Um, this is really complicated. <laughs> Run from complexity. Complexity is bullshit. Okay, let's see. Um... Is there a Steve blur? Let's see, distort. Uh, ripple. Large. Small. Medium. We could add a minor ripple. It's like, boom. But yeah, I mean, there's a ton of cool stuff that you can do, especially with these gradients. Like, one of my favorite uh, things that I like doing, uh, for example, if I took this and um, if I was working in a game engine like uh, Unity with Shader Forge, for example, and I made a custom shader, I can make a custom shader that had a different color for being lit and shadowed. So instead of being lit being like a special lighting operation, you could actually say, you could take into account like lighting intensity and all that, 
and actually use it to blend in two textures. So like when it's lit, it uses one texture, like this one, and, um, and when it's shadowed, it could use a different one. So for example, I could go here and uh, change my gradient from this to like dark blue, uh, dark blue, and then go over here. and change this to like a dark cyan. Oh yeah, this also, oh, I keep forgetting. Okay, so if we set this to multiply, it actually have control over the brightness. So this way we could actually go and add a little bit of shadowing. And uh, yeah. So we can add like little bits of shadowing to it. So again, this would be like your shadowed color, and then this would be your lit version. And then it would like blend between them. It, again, there's stuff like that you can do with these masks that's really fun and uh, just really enjoyable to kind of play around with. So anyway, hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Sorry it's been so long and rambly. It's just kind of getting back on the video making wagon, if you will. It's more of a burning wheel of death, but you know, hey. It's very fun to make videos, but uh, I just need to do it when not horribly, horribly stressed out, because then they turn out horribly, and I just end up sounding like a whiny bitch, so. Which, I don't want to make videos where I sound like a whiny bitch, and uh, because, yeah, I've made videos like that, and I think... I don't know, I just, I don't like posting those. I look back at the ones that I have done while I'm stressed out, and I'm just like, the, these videos are shitty. I'm just complaining about stuff and being a whiny bitch. So, no. Uh, I refuse to make more videos in a stressed out state. Because, first of all, it just makes videos less fun to make, and also, uh, makes not, them not fun to watch, in my opinion. I can provide useful information, but I will also do it with entertainment. Or at least not shitty, shitty voice acting. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the hell to call this. Commentary. That word. English. Yeah, totally my first language, guys. Totally. I am not just awful at English. I am just... Oh, God. Anyway. I'm tired. I'm gonna go do other things. But hopefully this has struck up some interest. Maybe try it out. Again, no promises. The There are no warranties contained within... Disclaimer, all things. Um, I'm just, you know, this is a technique that has helped me a lot. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I've been thinking about doing some more uh, idle, you know, kind of ramblings. I don't know if you guys even enjoy this content, but, you know, more rambly videos. Because I enjoy making them. And I enjoy kind of talking while I work. And I figured it might be useful to some people to hear some ramblings. Because, I don't know, I like videos like that, but maybe that's just weird for me. But, uh, you know, I like kind of commentary over stuff and talking about uh, techniques as someone's applying them. You know, it just as something to kind of play in the background and while I'm working. Because it just, I don't know, it's nice to kind of have a voice that's vaguely artistically inclined. So, I don't know. If you guys think that would be a good idea, I can do more of these. But, uh, you know, which won't carve into the normal content because, honestly, these don't take that long to make. They're just sort of me rambling over a topic. And, uh... Yeah, hopefully you guys are having a good week. Cthulhu Takin. And, uh, yeah, peace out. Make cool shit. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys make awesome stuff, and hopefully you link it in the description. And, oh, I'm supposed to be plugging my content. Uh, a friend of mine has been yelling at me about plugging my own content. Okay, so, first of all, if you want to be notified when I post new videos, um currently trying to do a tutorial series on physically based shading which i need to sort of reapproach so it doesn't take for ages just to get a video done but uh yeah doing a physically based shading series for blender and also doing a couple other things i don't know i do quick tips as well when i have quick tips to do and time to do them but uh yeah so i make videos of miscellaneous kinds talking about art stuff probably talking about game dev stuff at some point um, yeah, so if that sounds interesting to you and you want to see, if you want to get a little alert 
whenever I, or like, have a, uh, my videos dropped into your sub box, yeah, just hit the subscribe button. Um, the like button is there if you like the video. Um, what that does is it basically just pushes the video up in search rankings and stuff, makes it show up more in searches. Uh, and if you have some friends who might also like to watch me ramble over painting and being a shitty painter, um, yeah, maybe hit the share button or just tell your friends. I mean, the share button's a convenience thing. Really, it just kind of assumes that you use X social network. Um, yeah, I mean, just tell your friends. Tell someone who might also be interested in the video content would also be incredibly, incredibly useful to me and valuable because I like when people watch my content because then it makes me feel not like a useless shit, so. <laughs> uh. So yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed the content and uh, there's my plug. There, I plug my shit. Get off my back, Zafion. And by the way, Zafion's not his name. I'm just making shit up. Um, I'm not going to actually throw out his name, because then he'll... I don't know if he'll get spam comments. I highly doubt it, but who knows? Maybe. One. Either way, he doesn't get recognition for this bullshit. It's, so, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to start trying to tell people to follow my shit. DeviantArt and Twitter in the description. I retweet stuff sometimes, and also have DeviantArt where I just post stupid pictures of... Mostly, like, lamps and doorknobs. Eh, maybe. I don't know. Check it out. <laughs> Pretty renders of doorknobs and pillar taps and various other sculpts that I've done. It's all CG bullshit, so, yeah. I'm essentially just killing time while I paint, because, I don't know, I feel like painting. So, yeah. Peace out. And yes, I'm going to ramble far beyond where I said the video was over. Pretty much when I say the video's over, just expect it to be over. Like, the rest of it's just going to be rambly pointlessness. I'm just sketching, slaneously wasting time, blah, blah. Okay. We're at too high of a resolution to be doing that shit. <laughs> Still have a certain amount of, you know, again, it's like, has more to do with the amount of resolution on your screen, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Ending video. Peace out. Kthuf Taken. Have a wonderful week. I have plugged my shit. Now get the fuck out.